Esther chapter 7. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. Now we left off in chapter 6. And he's gone home, crybaby to his family that uh, Mordecai got what he wanted. And the last thing is, he, the, the king's servants show up at his house. It's time for the second banquet. We've already had one banquet. Now why there's two banquets, why Esther does this, I have no idea. And the king said again unto the Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? It shall be performed even to half of the kingdom. In other words, you can't ask for the entire kingdom. That means giving her a half blank check. You can ask for anything you want. Just don't ask for my kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight. Oh. Well, they're dining together. She found favor with him when she walked when she kind of walked in the throne room to be seen that he held out the scepter for her. Because the law stated that if he didn't, you were in big, big trouble. And it's his wife. She was very beautiful to look upon. She had favor among everybody. God's working in this little in this young lady's life. O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition. Now this has got to perk up the king's ears from him. What do you mean? Uh, what does she mean, my life be given? And he's got to be thinking in his heart, thinking in his head, there's trouble here. What on earth is she going to ask? What is her trouble? Why are we having this banquet if there's trouble? And my people at my request. All right, this is the closest that Esther's gone to just telling who she is. My people. Well, he had from Ethiopia to India. From Euphrates all the way down to the Sinai Peninsula. Jew, I mean, all those people over there kind of look like the same. She could have fit in any of the classes over there. For we are sold, and she's talking about her and her people, which we know are the Jews. Sold. And if you go back to a few places back over here, he, Haman says that I will pay 10,000 talents. So they're sold. When you put up in the early westerns and all that, and what you see in the post office and things going on today, when you put up, say, wanted, reward $5,000, you are selling that person. Haman's doing it, or has done it, wickedly, because there's no cause, except for Mordecai not bowing down before him. So they are sold. I and my people. Well, Esther, come on. Let your English teacher smack you in the face for putting yourself first. I and my people. It's supposed to be the, my people and me. I'd rather take the English of the Bible, the King James Bible, than any idiots going through any college today to tell you any better. This is the original English. So the king and Haman are sitting there listening to her. She's, her life is on the line. Her people's lives are on the line. She's being sold, her and her people. And you can just imagine the king's just sitting there just drinking his wine like, okay, to be destroyed. Now, you know this is now this has got to get his heart and his conscience and his mind. Okay, wait a minute. You're my wife. You're the queen. Who's after you? And he's probably thinking maybe her maids and all that. 
Who's after them? Who bought you? And now you're destroyed. Now he wants to know what's going on because guess what? She's not no stupid young stupid girl here. She's bringing it close to home. I'm your wife. And there's trouble in your throne to be destroyed. And that would mean her heritage, her heritage and her de genealogy. And everything that the Jews own. How many genealogy records that have stopped because of Adolf Hitler? How many genealogy records have stopped because of the king of Babylon? Were there actually families of Jews that just, boom, they're gone? Heritage. How many heritage? How many family things? How many possessions of, of people did Adolf Hitler take and it never passed on? That's like a mother giving something to her daughter and saying, listen, your, your grandmother had this. I had it. Your great-grandmother had this. Your great-grandmother had it. Your great-great-grandmother. And then you lose it. It's been destroyed. It's stopped. It's not going to go any more further. Whatever that thing is, it's it's gone, wiped out, destroyed, to be slain. Well, you know what that means—to be killed. And you know she's got to get the king's attention here because these are not good things. And to perish. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish. She knows that, listen, under the Old Testament, she knows that there will be Jews that will die and go off into hell. That's what that verse means when she says perish. Perish off the land. There will be no more of them. Now the king has really got to be, he's got to be attentive right here. Kind of now sipping his wine like, in fear of himself. Because if they're going to attack the, my queen, where is the attack going to come to me? And maybe he could be thinking, oh, my throne is in, in, is in jeopardy. Or, you can have a story that happened in the Bible a long, long time ago. And then the results are, here, hon, take this fruit and eat it. Oh, okay, um. You know, Adam was there with Eve. And the king could be just sitting there, just eating his wine, drinking his wine, eating the grapes and stuff like that. While she's talking. Either he's got a heart, he's listening to her, he's wondering what's going on, or... I wish you'd just shut up and hurry up and get the story done, you're ruining the party. What about Haman? What's he thinking? Back there in the last chapter, the king says, Hey, who, who, what shall be done to the king who delighted? That's me. Yeah, I want to sit in the king's horse. I want to ride all around and everybody and proclaim in, in the royal clothes. Does he have an idea, Haman? Does he think, does he believe that this is him she's talking about? She does no one knows she's a Jew, by the way. So Haman wouldn't have the foggiest idea. Maybe he fears, maybe he's thinking like the king's thinking. Oh, something's going on with the throne here. It's going to be overthrown. What am I going to do with my position if the king is killed? She, she, she said a lot so far, but to the king and Haman, they don't know what she's saying. This is a providence of God that she's speaking I believe she's got the king's ear. And he's just waiting for her to, to proclaim. 
But if we have been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, we've been no death. We're servants. We're slaves. If that would have been the case, instead of death, instead of destroyed, instead of be slain, instead of perishing, if it had been just bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue. Well, kind of, she couldn't hold her tongue one day. You know, what happened to Queen Esther? Well, she was taken away to be a slave. Well, oh, no, 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 no. But that's not what she's saying here. She's saying, listen, this ordeal, this matter is so important that if it had been this little thing as, as slavery, bondmen, bond servant, I wouldn't even talk to you about this. I mean, if, if my cousin would come to me, come to me and say, listen, they're, they're, the whole family's in great debt and all that, and the, the creditors are coming, I wouldn't bother you, King. They can work it out themselves, or I work it out and stuff like that. That's not the king's importance right now. That's not important duty for the king. It can be worked out through Queen Esther, but this is not the king's ordeal. But she's talking about death. She's talking about destruction. She's talking about perishing. They said, that's the king's matter. And it's people. And it happens to be people under his authority. I had held my tongue. Although the enemy, well now she's getting close. The enemy And back in chapter 3, 10, it said that Haman was the enemy, the Jews' enemy. Could not countervail the king's damage. Now what she's saying right there, all the money that Haman had promised and would have paid for my people, for this to happen, would not equal, would not suffice what you did in the king's damage. Now, she, the king doesn't realize she has charged him with a charge. And he doesn't know it. Because he's the one that gave the ring over to Haman and said, go ahead and do it. He's at fault. He's at guilt. But what she's saying to him, what he doesn't know right now is, hey, listen, you got the king here. The damage could not equal the, the, the act of the same equal force of the enemy. Coming in to destroy couldn't do as much damage as the king did. The king did a lot of damage by, by giving this ring over to Haman. And I told you before, he would be charged, as we study, like Jezebel and uh, Ahab, he'd be charged with the murder. That's the king's damage. And it has not happened yet. No Jew has been killed yet. Had a Jew been killed, as we know the story already, they'd be accounted to the king. God is stepping in and protecting this king too. Now he may be charged with murder just by the, the, the thought or the action thereof, but he doesn't actually kill anybody. Now I got a question. Will you find King Asahurus in heaven? But it goes on. Then the king Asahurus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? You know he's been paying attention. Not like, you know, pick up the, what, what was that again? You want to repeat that? I wasn't, uh, I wasn't paying attention. I was, have some more bread over butter over there. What was that, Esther? He comes right out and said, Who is he? Notice Esther does not apply a charge at all. She doesn't name names. She tells the story. The king comes up and said, who is he? And where is he? Okay, I don't even want to, not only do I want to know where he is, who he is, I want to know where he is. Now, isn't that two questions that really intervene of God? Who is he and where is he? He's sitting at the end of the table. What's Haman thinking? 
Please, please pass the peas. Then over at a banquet, Haman's probably filling his face up just listening to these two talk, blah, 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 and he doesn't even know that he's going to be fattening up for the slaughter himself. So where is he? That durst presume in his heart to do so. And all things are, are in the heart. God judges by the heart. That's where your motives are. The king doesn't say, okay, who just says this? Who is the one who has devised this thing in his heart? Because this kiss can't be a thought. This has got to be wickedness. As we learned in Jeremiah today, the heart is, is, is a wicked. It's above all things, a, 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 imaginations that are wicked. Who is this vile person? And that's what God's going to judge one day. He doesn't judge by the outward appearance. He judges by the inside of man. He judges by the heart. As a Harris type of God. I don't care if this guy was a Cub Scout, Boy Scout, troop leader and all that stuff. I want to know what his heart condition is. And Esther said, the adversary, that's Satan, adversary that accuses the brethren, an enemy, that's Satan, Satan seeking to devour, go about as a lion seeking who he may devour, is this wicked Haman. Oh, that, that banquet just tearing the tables now. You just see him having a chicken drumstick hanging in his mouth, fall down to the plate. What? <laughs> I think I heard my name. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. I'd be afraid too. Now, it's funny because in 3-5, he was full of wrath. He was joyful in 5.9. He was boasting in 5.11 and 12. Yet he was angry in 5.13. He was in his glory in 6.6. 6. He was defeated in 6.11. And he was mourning in 6.12. And now he's afraid. Now, this has been a picture of the tribulation period, the temple and the city and Satan and Antichrist. What, what do you think is going to be when God finally puts Antichrist down? He's going to fear. Before the king and queen. The king arising. Would you read in Acts chapter 7 about Stephen? Had Israel received Jesus Christ as the Messiah? The king getting up pitches the second advent. Esther's called out to the king. Hey, we got this wicked enemy over here, Lord. Banquet of wine. Doesn't the Bible state that when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to tread the grapes? And the blood's going to be up to, up to the, uh, the, whatever, the, the bridles? And his apparel is going to be covered in blood? Tread the wine press of the, gra of the wrath of God? Those words are not just in there just to show what's going on. Went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen. I bet you he did. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. <laughs> what about the evil that he got the king into? 
It's only because of his evil, Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall offer to reap. You've been wanting to kill all these people. Well, guess what? Your death is coming. You got the king involved. Now the king's going to have you killed. Now, I don't think the Antichrist is going to plead with Israel. That's You can't press that type. But it says that uh, the evil determination against him by the king. King gets up and leaves. So when the king comes, king of king and lord of lords, when he comes on that horseback, Satan knows there is wrath. There is anger coming. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine. And Haman was fallen upon the bed wherein Esther was. Now remember I told you back in the beginning that this wasn't a bed, you know, craftmatic bed or, you know, mattresses. This is a bed that's shaped like a broken L. You lounge to eat and it's better for a digestion. He's sitting on the chair. And the way the chair is positioned, the Bible says that John was able to lay upon Jesus' breast. And the way that Haman is, he's looks like he's overtaking the queen. Maybe trying to kill her. Or other things. And Haman was falling upon the bed wherein queen Esther was. I had something that was working. I can't get it out of my head what it was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in, in the house? Force the queen to what? You know what I mean, it could be the killer or sexual. I don't know why it would be sexual. He does not have a love. Well, he just found out she's a Jew. King probably thinks of what she's been what she's been saying. He's out to kill her. I don't think it's sexual. She just told him, said, listen, I'm going to be destroyed. I'm going to be slain. I'm going to perish. And here's this guy laying upon her. <laughs> and according to what, 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 again, like I said, with John and Jesus laying upon his breast, and he could probably think he's probably choking her. And he's not. He's pleading. Brother, it don't look good. As the word went out of the king's mouth, oh, come on, you don't see Jesus Christ? You don't see Jesus Christ coming back on a horseback where the Bible says he's got the sword coming out of his mouth? You don't see that? You don't read your Bible. The king is angry. You know how angry Jesus Christ is going to be when he comes back? The enemy, he thinks, his, the enemy thinks, he thinks the enemy is doing something to his wife. God's bride, the Jews. He's angry. They covered Haman's face. Haman can't see. You know what the Bible says about this, the last time period of tribulation? There will be no sun and no moon. You know what? You can't see. And then you'll look off, and you'll see this little light. You know, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it gets darker. And it gets dark, I mean brighter and brighter, excuse me. And you start looking, you're squinting your eyes, and it looks like a horse. It looks like a horse and a rider. It looks like he's angry. Oh, Lord, that is the Lord. Get all our gods, hide them. He's coming back and he's angry. 
So they go cover themselves in the mountains and the caves and all that from the wrath of the God, Jesus Christ. And Harboneth, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold, now remember, remember I made jokes all through the, you know, the gals that, hey, listen, Harboneth, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows 50 feet high. Listen, everybody knew. Which Haman had made for Mordecai. Everybody knew it. Who had spoken good for the king. Remember, remember, remember the other day, king? Remember you were reading something and, and you brought the honor of uh, Haman? I mean, uh, you brought the honor of Mordecai? Yeah. You wanted to kill Mordecai too? And you just imagine Esther stepping up, honey, gang, yeah. Mordecai's my uncle, I'm a Jew. What? <laughs> and then, boy, does it spill out for Haman. You want to talk about Haman's in trouble. He was in trouble. Now, you wanted to kill Mordecai with those things? That's Mordecai is my best friend. He's the one who saved my life. Maybe you're out to get my throne. Remember what I said the other day? Had Haman uh, got the king's apparel, got the king's crown, got the king's heart, had it not been a Bible story about the Jews, remember I told you? He probably overstepped the government. But we don't know because that didn't happen that way. Who speaketh good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, hang him thereon. Be not deceived. King has heard type of type of God. God is not mocked. <laughs> Whatsoever man soweth, build those gallows, that he shall also reap. You're going to hang on him. Why? Well, the news is out. King Azarus wants Jews killed, and guess what? Did you hear? His wife is a Jew. The guy that stands at the, at, the, at the gate, the one that saved his life. Did you hear that he's a Jew? See, the king did a lot of damage, Esther said, by not looking into what Haman wanted to do with that and then handing him the ring. Here, here, here is it done. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. So what would happen after the king's wrath was pacified? According to scriptures. According to Bible. A thousand year reign of peace. Satan... He's not dead. Can't press the type all the way. But the Antichrist and the false prophet are put into the lake of fire. Satan is locked up for a thousand years. And now the king's like, satisfied. Okay. And we're going to see the Jews having a good old time. And the millennial rest. These books here are, are laid out to what's going to happen. Like I said, do not press a type all the way. You can't kill Satan. But, let's say something else here with scriptures you, you, everyone misses. How did Haman die? He hung on the gallows. He's a type of who? Alright. Who in the Bible is a type of Antichrist is going to be the Antichrist and how did he die? Judas, he hung himself on a tree. Look at that. You're a study Haman. You're studying the Antichrist. He goes the same way that Judas went. Now, he does not come back to life in Esther, but Judas will. And that's how we close off this chapter. 
a man hanging. Then you get this story in the westerns. You, know, you got this outlaw, and then you know they catch him, they bring him over to the gals, they hung him, and that's it. Everybody goes about the the peaceful doing and dodge. But it ain't over. Now you got the king, he's happy, he's pleased, and he's going to reign. And we'll close there.